The Lawyer Who Rocks is brought to you by Hughes Media Law Group. You can visit us at hmlglaw.com. Keep up with the podcast on social media at hmlglaw on all major platforms and be sure to follow us there. Thank you for listening and enjoy this episode of The Lawyer Who Rocks. Welcome to the season finale of The Lawyer Who Rocks. We have one final very special episode coming out on December 29th. Until then, we hope you have a great holiday season. Thank you for listening all year to The Lawyer Who Rocks, and we will see you next year. My name is Jolene Winther Hughes. I am a lawyer who rocks. When it comes to having your back, there ain't nobody better. This you better believe. Today, my guest is a PR powerhouse. Kiki Chatfield is the founder and CEO of Next Step PR, the literary PR company I have been so fortunate to work with in my own secret author journey. She's also a dynamic, energetic Southern belle, and I'm so excited to learn about her today and how she got to where she is now. Welcome, Kiki. I'm so excited that you're here today. I am so honored to be here. I am just ecstatic that you guys asked me to be on the show. My listeners know that I have the secret life as a romance author. To Kiki, it's really my only life because she even calls me by my author name mostly. I really would love to know more about your background. Like I know you're in Kentucky now, but where are you from originally? So I'm from a little town in Southern Ohio called Wheelersburg, and it's on the Ohio River. I live in Ohio. My family was across the river. Uh, My dad's side is in Ashland, and I lived there from four to 19, and then I moved to Kentucky when I went to school, and I got my degree in education at the Eastern Kentucky University. Did you always want to be a teacher or? I did. I did. My aunt is a teacher and she went to Eastern. And when I did my college visits, I went to all these different places and Eastern, not only was it gorgeous, but it's also known for its education program. So literally I went, I was sold. I signed up and enrolled and that was it. I wanted to go to that college because it was just for me. Did you actually get a teaching job when you got done with school? I did. I was in the education field. I've always worked with kids. I've worked in daycare. I've been a nanny. And then the teaching thing kind of just rolled into it as well. And I've always worked with children. So I did elementary education, K through five. And then I worked with special education. And I did that for about 10 years. And then once I had my first little guy, I quit and stayed at home for three years. And then that's when I kind of felt that need and urge to work again. The Next Step PR emerged from the love of books. I was a reader first, but hold on, let's backtrack just a little there. I hated to read first. (laughs) Let's just state that. I hated to read. The only reason I felt like now today as an adult, why I hated to read, I never found the right books that really engaged me as a young reader. So I did not really discover this indie and even traditionally published world until 2012. And I was reading like crazy. My mom got me the Kindle Fire for Christmas. So I was like, I'm going to try this out because I wasn't going to purchase something that I was like, I'm not going to read. I'm not going to like it. And she was like, just try it. Just try it. So I got the Kindle Fire, got, I think, Fifty Shades and Twilight really got me into reading. And then you find this whole nother indie world. I wouldn't shower. Dinner wasn't getting cooked on time. My husband's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm engulfed in these worlds and into these characters. So reading really took on its own form in 2012 for me. And then um, online, all these people were talking about ARCs, ARCs. And I was like, I want one. What is that? And these PR companies would say, well, you're not a blogger. You can't get one. I'm like, but I read and review. Why can't I? And they're like, no, no. I got told no so many times. So I was like, fine, I'll be a blogger. What do I do? Who do I need to talk to? So I started researching. I put like a call on my Facebook page. Hey, is anybody looking for a blogging partner? Just know I have no experience. You're going to have to teach me the ropes. 
And this lovely lady in LA brought me in. She did videos. She sent me how to's, how to blog, how to build an HTML. So reading turned into blogging. And I did blogging for nine months with her and read all these amazing authors, networked. I learned a lot in that nine months. So then in 2014, I was at an author event in Kentucky and this lady wanted to start her own PR company but I didn't have the balls to do it. I was just too scared. I didn't know the business aspect. So I was like, well, I'll be the face and I can do, you know, the personal things and the promotions and things like that if you handle the business side and the money. So I did that for a year before the Next Step PR was born. And the Next Step PR was born. I brought people with me. I've taught people. And basically I built this business off of knowledge, know-how, networking. If I didn't know it, I YouTubed it and I figured it out. And literally that's where it came from. When you start a business and you haven't done it before, what was for you the most daunting thing? Because people don't realize like what it takes sometimes to set up a business from creating an entity to the LLC process, your tax ID, making sure I had a separate account for my personal account. Like I didn't want to get in trouble with the government. <laughs> so I was making sure I had my ducks in a row. My stepdad is my CPA. So he was very helpful. Just having people around me that were a support system, asking other people, because I do have other PR friends. So I was just asking them little questions here and there, and they were very helpful. And it was very scary and very daunting. But yeah, just knowing the LLC, getting your ducks in a row, even like tax time, when tax time came around, just knowing what I needed to do to prepare myself. And it was so much easier as a single entity than doing it with another person. That was difficult. Absolutely. I think with self-publishing, it has actually put the creative control in the hands of authors and their own team members. Is that where you really felt like your niche was? Absolutely. I felt like I had this itch to help in any way, shape, or form. And when people do come to us, I am 100% upfront with them that we do not do things like a traditional publishing house would. We have created our own forum, our own ways, because we listen to both the author and the reader. We literally created content, created promotions, trends that were just, we didn't want to be like them. We wanted to stand out a little bit more. And I feel like today... In 2012, when I first started this, it was a lot easier because now the market is so oversaturated with the indie market is so much harder to hit a list, to be seen. Back in the day, it was easier. I felt like we're doing less. Now we're doing more and it's even harder to be seen. But even with some of the traditionally published authors I work with, their publishing house actually wants me to do more and they are doing less. And I feel like the indie world is really taking a stand right now against the traditionally published. We're making waves and people are starting to see it. And then like TikTok has been a game changer for so many people. And you're one that knows this very well as well. And book talkers are making waves that the bookstores are actually taking notice and producing those books and having those books in the bookstore. So if you're an indie published author and you're listening to this podcast, no, you can get your books in bookstores. Your book has to be wide on all platforms and it has to be returnable. So Barnes and Noble, you can even contact them personally and say, hey, how can I get my book in your bookstore? And you personally can do it yourself. So tell me a little bit about what does Next Step PR do? So the Next Step PR will work with anyone from a debut, getting ready to write a book to even, you know, someone who has 25, 30 bucks. We literally work with everyone. And I just want to make sure that people understand we're a company that represents all the levels. So we do promotions, we get readers involved, book talkers, bookstagram. We're basically setting your book up and getting it ready to sell to the public. And there's this promotional process checklist. We get you organized. We set things up for you. 
we get your list organized. We make sure that you have your checklist of, do you have a Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, website, newsletter, master list? There's a long list. It's the educational process of getting organized before you hit publish. I feel like I tell you guys this all the time too. Writing the book was the easiest part. <laughs> it's the easiest part that you're doing. Now just getting your marketing materials, setting a plan, getting organized, getting on the calendar. And every plan is different. Every client has something that they want to do. We have clients who love parties and takeovers. We have clients who do the bare minimum. It's literally a give and take relationship. It's an open relationship. There's a lot of communication. Kayleen and I have a set call every Tuesday at noon. We know that we're going to discuss and go over that week or what needs to be established. And the biggest thing with us is just the communication and staying on top of all our tasks because there's lots of hands involved, lots of wheels. And Kayleen has been great because she's so absorbent in listening to what she needs to do and she takes it and she runs with it. So not all clients are easy and that's okay. But I think my teaching also has come into this because I get to teach, I get to educate, I get to show. And if you don't know how to do something, we work it out. Well, I mean, one of the things that I did not know about, like when I first started, I remember I got asked by one of my favorite authors, Mary Carr, last year to do a takeover. And so when we talk about takeovers, I kind of want to get into a lot of these things because they're such foreign concepts. And even when I'm telling my husband what I'm doing, like, okay, I'm putting my Kayleen hat on now and I'm going to go take over a Facebook page. We're going to go through some of this and you're going to tell me what they mean. So these are all elements of PR. So the first thing is, is that when you have a book release, there's a cycle to it, correct? Correct. So what is the cycle? So when you release a book, we have like a four week plan. We have a six week plan and we break down parties, takeovers, and then the takeover is basically you can host your takeover as an author in someone else's group. You can host it in your group. And then as the next step PR, we have a party room just for our authors alone. And what a takeover means is you're sharing yourself with this group to entice them to A, get to know you and B, buy your book. So there is some giveaways, but when you give something away, this is really important. And I try to stress this to all clients. If you're going to give something away, make sure you're getting something in return. So if you're going to give away a gift card, make sure they're signing up for your newsletter. If you're going to give away a paperback, make sure that they're adding the book to their to be read list. When you're an author and just giving something away and not getting anything in return, it's not beneficial to you. Same thing with parties. A party is kind of like the same thing as a takeover. Um, they're normally 15 minute spots to 60 minute spots. Another term is a pop-in. Pop-ins, takeovers, and parties are pretty much the same thing because your end goal is meet new readers, meet new authors, give them things away and get something in return to build your readership. And they're also, I feel like me personally, I feel like they're vital. I feel like you need to do them to get yourself out there. I know they're not for everybody and we have clients that absolutely despise them. And I try to push it. I'm like, just try it. Come on, just try it. You got to put yourself out there so people can get to know you in some shape, way, or manner. So that's one of the big things that we do. And then we do a lot of swapping. You do newsletter swaps, we do pre-order blasts when we use BookBub and we use Amazon and we do countdowns to get ready for the book launching. We do teaser Tuesdays. We do a lot of, hey, I have a release coming up and you post it on your page and your author friends will respond back, hey, yeah, you can post in my group and share a giveaway or swap arcs. There's just literally, there's so many different algorithms in different ways that you can set up your launch and you have to do what works best for you as an author. We have lists and lists of things that you can do and we go over them and she picks and chooses. Yeah, I can do that or no, that's not for me. And that's another thing that's been really great with our working relationship is she picks and chooses what she's comfortable with and we never force her to do anything she's not comfortable with. Well, you hit on a couple of things and I think that some of the listeners may not be aware of them because I know I was not aware of them when I hit publish on Amazon last year. 
So one of them is Goodreads. So Goodreads is a pretty important platform for any author, right? It's a very clunky system that's built on old technology. But why is Goodreads so important? And that's when you said add to my to be read list. That's a Goodreads term of art, correct? Goodreads is almost like an online library for you to keep track of books you want to read, books you have read. You can leave reviews on Goodreads, but it is so important to be on Goodreads because as an author, there are so many people in the other industries like Netflix, movies, Hallmark, all these people are looking at these books that are popular. Goodreads has created, even though it is a little ancient and I wish they would update their forums, it's a place that you need to get your book up on, has a cover. It also has a place for your link. You have blog posts that you can keep your readers engaged on Goodreads, but it's like a library. You keep track of how many books you've read, what you've read, because you might like see a book and you're like, oh, I can't remember if I read that or not. And you go to your Goodreads account, which is free, and you get on there and see if you've read it or not. And there's a lot of um, reader groups that readers have become really good friends because of these groups. And they do also takeovers and parties and questions. We work with the New Adult Book Club on Goodreads, like their group is specifically over there. And I don't feel like Goodreads is going anywhere as a forum for books. Give us a little look under the hood. How does your team approach working with authors? As you know, I have a lot of connections. I've been in this industry for a long time. So some of my techniques are, I'll give introductions or I'll say, hey, head to our website, maybe connect with our authors first. And then once they connected with some of our authors, I'll say, okay, do you have a wish list of authors you want me to set you up with? Because I'll try anything. Like I really will. (laughs) And then if that goes well, then we take the next steps of, okay, let's do something together. Like we'll host an event, you know, maybe get on a call with that author. It's all about just collaboration and just being kind to each other. I feel like the kindness and just like you said, supporting each other. And even if they're not a client and they see that we're participating in that and helping with that, I just, you know, I hope that other authors see, you don't have to be with us, we'll still support you because if we don't support each other, I feel like this business is going to go down the drain if we don't all get on the same bandwagon. And sometimes that's hard, but under the hood, basically I set you up within house first. Then if you have a wish list second, and then we take that and go a little bit further and do some parties or we'll say, Hey, let's set up sales together. Because as an author, when you're putting a book on sale, you want other people to see it. So if you're collaborating with multiple people and they're sharing it and you're sharing it, you know, your book's guaranteed to do a little bit better than it was solo. So yes, it's definitely vital to team up, to promote together. And, you know, not everybody's on board and that's okay. And we just move on to the next one and that's all right. What are some top pieces of advice you have for new authors who are just getting started? Have a plan. I know that's easier said than done. Make sure that you are on all the right platforms. The right platforms would be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, have a newsletter set up, TikTok, Goodreads, BookBub, Amazon. Now Goodreads and Amazon are a little bit tougher because if you don't have a pre-order or book published, you can't have one of those just yet. Those are the major platforms. And a newsletter, we use MailChimp. A lot of people like Mel or Light. And basically think about this. If Facebook died tomorrow, Twitter died tomorrow, how are you going to reach your readers? You need a list of emails. I feel like email has been here forever. It's going to be here forever. So you need to start creating that list. And people are like, Kiki, but I don't have any content yet. I don't have this yet. Yes, you can. You can promote yourself. You can put yourself out there. I think we had this conversation too. You're like, the book's not written yet. And I'm like, that's okay. Well, don't promote the other things. A lot of people feel like they have to promo, promo, promo all the time. And you do not ask a question on your page 
make no image. Don't say question of the day. I spoke on this at Inker's Con. I speak at this all the time on Vince because it has been successful for us for almost five years now. And our insights are higher. They're more organic because Facebook wants you to pay them and we will not. I refuse to pay Facebook. I just refuse. And you're like, Kiki, but what kind of question? Anything simple, the least amount of thinking, the better. Readers don't want to think too hard. Make it an A, a B, a this and that. Then once that gets rolling, then you can add a picture. Then you can start your own question of the day type thing. Get them in a rhythm of what you're going to you know, provide them. Organization. Google Drive is a great friend to get your stuff put together. Have a great editor. Have a great book cover designer. Those are like two top, top things. Like if your book cover is not visually there, it's not going to sell. You have three seconds to grab a reader with your cover or your blurb. And those are like the vital things with, you know, having your launch. And I know not everybody can afford PR, but you can have a team. You can have supporters reach out. A lot of people do things for free these days. I've given people, they're like, I can't afford you, Kiki. Well, if you want a coaching call with me once a month, we can go over strategy and social media. I offer that, you know, just knowing who does what, get organized before you hit publish. Do not publish that book until you have your ducks in a row. That is the biggest thing. I've seen so many people hit publish. They have no followers. They have no newsletter and they have no lists. You can't sell a book to people that don't know you. Well, one of the things that you also do is you put on events, don't you? Events where authors and readers can gather. I do. I host Authors in the Bluegrass was my first solo, but I also co-hosted a few events over the years. I've been to over, I think the last time I calculated, 213 author events since 2013. And an author event is basically where you rent out a space, you invite authors to come for the weekend and sign and we promote it to readers but authors in the bluegrass is not just an author event it's an experience we are not just doing a book signing it's a three to four day event we're going to have panels we haven't announced all that information just yet because we're waiting to announce the date we're going to have 75 authors it's adult content authors people are like well can i bring my kids it's more of a 15 and up event some of our authors dabble in different genres. So we're comfortable with, if you are a YA author, you can bring those books because we have people who buy Christmas presents for their kids and that kind of stuff too. We're going to have a couple other surprises. I don't want to spill the beans on everything, but yeah, it's an author event. It's just fun. And then we're just kind of taking it to the next level. Cause you know, I like to use that word a lot. So you were attendee of all these, then you started your own company. What is so fun for, let's start with as a reader, why would you go to events like this? Oh my God. Like I get chill bones just talking about it. It is so amazing to walk up to this person who created this world for you and just talk to them and how humble and how nice they are to get your book signed and they'll sign pretty much anything that you hand them and to get your picture with them. And that's just like a memory because- A lot of these readers read to escape. They read because they don't want to be where they are. They read because they love it. And it's just like, you don't know who you're touching. So going in as a reader, that's been really cool to go on that side. Now I've also been on the other side where I'm helping my authors and working with them and hearing those stories. Oh my God, I have cried. I have like hugged people just to hear that how that book or that author changed their life, like saved lives. Like I've heard suicide stories and just like really tough situations that it's like, come be in our book world. We're supportive. We love people. Like you never have to be alone. So the event as a reader and then being on the other side, it's just really like pure magic. It's so exciting, but it's also nerve wracking, but it was worth it. And to this day, I'll never forget that. So as an author, why is it important to go to these events? Authors, because you're meeting so many new readers that you might not have online and you're networking with other authors who you might not have met online. It is like vital. I love them. I feel like it's a win-win because you're meeting other authors who might support you and then readers that you might have never connected with online because your personal 
experience with that person could change their view on, Hey, I saw her books online, but I met her. Oh my God. I loved her. I've also had that experience where I haven't read probably hundreds of books by some of these authors that are my very close friends, but I love them. I will support them. I will tweet them. I will share them because they are such amazing people. So it's really cool. The friendships and all the different things that come out of book signings. And it's so cute to see other readers coming together that talk online or they've been in each other's reader groups. And then it's a really beautiful thing to see. So you have a team of people that work with you. How did you find them? So Colleen is like the vice president of the Next Step PR. If anything happens to me, she's our girl. So I'm pretty sure in the first company, she was one of our bloggers. And when I switched over getting prepared, I put a all call out looking for interns, looking for people interested in PR marketing. And she applied and I knew her through the blogging world because I knew a lot of bloggers because I was a blogger. So she was like first on my totem pole and the friendship and just talking books And that was just effortless. And today she's like one of my best friends. Like we literally are ying to each other's yang. And we're very much on the same page. A lot of them are stay-at-home mamas or bloggers and readers. And I literally have a services tab on our website and people just have filled that out. And as we go along, I'll reach out. Anna and Emily are newest from intern to on staff. We had our eyes on Anna for a while because her blogging and just promoting all our clients. And then I kind of just reached out to her and kind of pushed her into it. And then she came back and yeah. And then Emily's the funniest story because Emily was so hard coming hard at me that I was like, she's too good to be true. So I actually put the brakes on that one for a while. And now it's been like the best thing ever. I was like, I don't know if she's genuinely like, she wants this or she just overkill or what but if you watch her and her tiktoks are hilarious on her personal page but she is just that's who she is she goes hard she goes full and that's exactly how I am so I was like I was scared we were gonna bump heads and you know test the waters because the interns have to do a 90 day internship and it's not paid and we have to see if you're really cut out to do this because not everyone is cut out to do this and yeah those ladies have been a amazing and then underneath Colleen is Jill and Megan and they are just like oh my god I literally have such a great team I couldn't be more blessed I wish the company could be like another step higher so I could hire more people so we could do more things but right now I feel like we're in that comfy spot we're good and I'm just blessed to have who I have because they are so amazing Well, is there anything that you have coming up that you're super psyched about? I mean, obviously you have a lot of author stuff, but what are you most excited about? Obviously your fourth book coming out. We have new clients coming in. It's just like, I feel like we're a revolving door, but it never stops. Like there's something fun. Well, Kiki, it is so great to get to know more about your background. When I met Kiki, your enthusiasm, your tenacity, just like your just extraordinary excitement about this and just knowledge of the book industry. And Anna just could not say she'd worked with so many different book PR companies. And she's like, Kiki is the best. And Next Step PR is the best out of all of them. But for that reason, and many more, you're a badass to me. Why do you think you're a badass? We go full force. I don't half-ass anything. I feel like I'm upfront with what we do, what we're capable of. I don't blow shit up anybody's ass. Sorry if I'm not saying too many bad words. We are who we say we are as a company. I feel like we stand on our two feet proudly with our heads raised high. And we also, we don't get in the drama. We stay in our little bubbles and we promote and we promote hard. And I, like, I had a call today with a TikToker because we're, you know, going down that route and she made me cry today because she was like, I love everything you guys do. She did a call with me because she wanted to know how to up her engagement on Instagram 
And she said, when I post for the next step PR, I know my interactions are going to go up because you and your team are the only people who ever interact on my posts. And that just like broke my heart a little bit that she's not getting that engagement. But the fact that I know we're doing it and I know we're giving it 120%, like myself, my team, I feel like we are badasses. We go, we give, we do. Well, Kiki, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. It's been such a fun just experience to kind of me turn the tables on you a little bit. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. Thank you for listening to The Lawyer Who Rocks. If you've enjoyed it and want to hear more from Business Badasses, make sure you hit the subscribe button wherever you get your podcasts. While you're at it, please give us a review. It really helps us grow the show. The Lawyer Who Rocks is produced and edited by Sean Fox and HMLG. A big thank you to Aaron Jones for our theme music, to Jeff Gilbert at Hairball Media for our graphics, and a huge thanks to my entire team at HMLG. If you need a lawyer who rocks, find us at hmlglaw.com. On the next episode, have that inclusion embedded into everything you do and who you are and what you stand for. The rest is not sustainable. You can never build and grow on it. This podcast has been brought to you by HMLG. If you need lawyers who rock, visit us on our website at hmlglaw.com and be sure to follow us on social media platforms at hmlglaw. You can also follow me on Instagram at the lawyer who rocks. Well, I think that's the drop of the mic right there. <laughs> <laughs>